few people have asked me to talk about the significance of Five Nights at Freddy's, and how it appears to be a much more frightening horror than most modern AAA titles. It essentially comes down to the simplicity of its design. In 2012, Slender the Eight Pages was indeed a revolution in how we experience horror in a video game format, by introducing minimalistic controls and design in order to focus on the core of what makes the player scared. Over the past few years, horror games have fixated on keeping up to date with the ever-changing scope of what gamers expect from their expensive purchases. Upgradable XP systems, action-oriented gameplay, relatively long run times, multiplayer and detailed storytelling are just some of the various considerations that drive our decision to purchase a game. Where indie developers differ is how they utilize their limitations to effectively project the emotional impact of their games. The word experience is thrown around a lot by developers and publishers in an attempt to define what they want their game to be, despite the word being nothing but vague. The experience of a game is defined largely by the emotional engagement of the player, rather than what they're actually doing. So it doesn't take a genius to work out that extensively detailed game design doesn't make your game any more meaningful. Five Nights at Freddy's captures the significance of the design notion that less is more. Fear is generated from the process of conditioning. An individual learns throughout their life about various associations that generate a negative or aversive response, such as snakes, spiders, or fire. If, for example, you put an individual in a dark room with a mysterious figure at the other end, the conditioning is that the neutral context, i.e. the room, becomes associated with the negative stimuli, in this case, the mysterious figure at the other end of the room, thus resulting in a natural response of fear or worry. To put it another way, we associate two stimuli together and respond accordingly. The room is a conditional stimulus that associates with the mysterious figure who is an unconditional stimulus, thus the fear being a conditional response. As a result, the neutral condition will eventually become associated with a state of fear, due to its relative connection to the negative stimuli. So the room in our example will produce fear the next time the individual visits. In Five Nights at Freddy's, we are essentially in a typical family restaurant but the images of the various rooms are associated with negative ideas, that there is something wrong with the animatronic animals. There's nothing inherently scary apart from the displacement of the animals around the different security cameras. It's essentially a series of still images that subtly change and you don't see the animals move, well, kinda. But the actual fear comes from the notion that they are supposedly getting closer to you. Hence, the stimuli of the images changing is enough to produce an anxious or even paranoid response from the player, while the eye contact perpetuates the sense of threat. Ultimately, the entire science behind fear-inducing stimuli comes from the implications of the mind rather than being anything physical. We as humans create the fear as fear itself doesn't exist. We set the conditions of situations we find ourselves in, and Five Nights succeeds in appropriately giving us irrelevant information, such as the disappearance of five children and a serial killer, which outside the world of theorization, has nothing to do with the animatronics who don't actually intend to kill the player, rather than assume they are another animatronic not in costume. Basically, the developer is throwing you off the scent using other negative stimuli. The next time you play a game, consider the conditions of stimuli. What is the conditional, the unconditional, and the response? Shock, sadness, happiness, it doesn't necessarily need to apply to horror, but simply gathering associations and seeing how you respond to them, such as walking into your empty house, see blood on the floor and respond by screaming, or enter an ominous prison, see a happy guard, and respond with relief. You're in control of the emotional weight of a game, but it's still the developer's job to appropriately and effectively visualize what the player wants and doesn't want to see.